All right, guys, so in an update to the Bam Margera situation, he went ahead and surrendered himself this morning. I just want to first and foremost say that I am glad he was found okay. Uh, I know he's a celebrity and they don't really care about you and all this and that, but growing up as a teenager, I was I was a big fan of Bam Margera. I really enjoyed you know, his TV show, Viva La Bam. I loved his antics on Jackass. And to see how far he's fallen down, we're all human, we all battle with our demons, but to see how far he's fallen down, it's, it's really sad to watch. And this whole situation uh, was alarming, honestly, to hear that he's on the run and they couldn't find him and he was wanted. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just glad he's still alive, all right? So he surrendered after going on the run this morning and this is an update for this story so I just wanted to kind of talk about it so it says he's no longer on the run surrendered surrendering to face charges for allegedly assaulting his brother and speaking out with details of how he says it all went down so now he's given a I guess his own side of the story we already heard the other day what happened uh, this is days after cops put out a warrant for his arrest on Sunday, when Bam allegedly got in an altercation with his brother, where cops say he threatened to put a bullet in his head. The Pennsylvania State Police tells TMZ Bam appeared in court for his first appearance and his bail was set at $50,000. He's due back in court at the end of May. Now, here's a screenshot that he uh, posted, I think, on an Instagram, on an Instagram post, giving an update. And this whole situation just sounds like it was people that were drunk, possibly, fighting with each other. I don't know. This There's always two sides to every story, right? And and nothing has been found yet. Nobody's been convicted of anything. So it's always, it's always good to keep an open mind. With that said, he, he definitely has had some demons that he's been battling. And who knows what's going on or what's facts at this point. But looking at this, it says, according to court docs, the judge ordered Bam to complete a drug and alcohol assessment. He was also ordered to stay away from his brother and the other victims in his brother's house. The judge said Bam has to get permission from the pretrial services department if he wants to leave the state of Pennsylvania. So he's not even allowed to leave the state. Upon turning himself in, Bam shared a photo of himself in front of the courthouse on social media and captioned it. I just got out of the courthouse with my lawyers. So this is what this is. Everything went great and the false accusations of what my brother says are not true. And he will be sued for defamation as well as being evicted from Castle Bam sooner than later. It's always sad when family members have to sue other family members in any situation, not even just in this. Um... You hear people just fighting to the point where they're suing each other. It's a very, very sad situation when you see things come to that, especially with your um, close ones. And I'm sure it's no help being a public figure, getting TMZ and everybody, including 8-Bit Eric, talking about your problems. He goes on to say, the reason this happened is because I read his phone saying he wants me back in California and he wants to find a way to 302 me. Fuck him. I have no clue what 302 is. I'm sure this will explain it. You can see uh, some images right here. I mean, I could talk to my light bulbs. My car can back out of the garage and pick me up at the front door. Police should be able to track a phone right. Apparently, I'm the asshole. So, I guess these are some replies that he had to uh, to people on on Twitter. Not sure. Anyways, continuing on with the actual article because I'm, I'm just processing this. You know what I mean? Because I think this whole situation came out of left field, honestly. And it seems like every couple months something happens with Bam. But this says the his attorney Michael Van Der Veen tells TMZ he was arraigned and entered his plea of not guilty. He was released on unsecure bail. Mr. Margera enjoys all of his constitutional rights, including the presumption of innocence. The wild rumors regarding his behavior this week are absolutely false. He's in good condition and in good spirits. Team Z broke the story. Cops were called to his home in 
Pocopson Township, PA, Sunday, where Bam's brother, Jess, claimed Bam attacked him, hitting him multiple times in the head. Jess said Bam was enraged, allegedly saying, I'll kill you, I'll put a bullet in your head. Jess said Bam fled into the woods after the alleged attack. Bam allegedly made phone calls to his family while on the run, seemingly intoxicated, telling everyone how much he hated them for putting him in a treatment center last year and accusing them of stealing money from him. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sad to hear. Um, honestly, this whole situation, I, I feel... Man, it's it's tough. It's tough when somebody's dealing with with demons. Obviously, when when they're a recovering drug addict, recovering alcoholic, they they're constantly in rehab and treatment, and they're in the public eye. Uh, you got to remember, it's it's been a solid what twenty five years or so that Bam Margera's been in the limelight as a public figure, and I know. People are like, oh, well, then he shouldn't have ever wanted to become a celebrity because it's the life he chose. No, it's it's tough. Um, honestly, like I said the other day, I think a lot of his personal demons have to deal with uh, the loss of his friend when Ryan Dunn got into that tragic accident. It seems like he's never fully recovered. And it's kind of tough because he has his friends like he has all the jackass crew still. We don't really know what's going on behind the scenes with them, how many times they've tried to help him or had a, I guess, a intervention with him. But like for me, and I know it's easy to say on the outside looking in, for me, if I had a friend going through this much, I, I'm a firm believer in tough love. Like I would sit his ass down, beat the shit out of him physically and verbally until he stopped fucking up. And I think that should have happened a long time ago. But what it could have should us, we don't know the truth. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes. The main thing that I'm going to say out of this whole situation so far is I'm glad he surrendered. I'm glad he turned himself in. I'm glad he was okay. He's in good health. He's alive. My biggest fear was that we were going to find him dead in the woods. As, as crazy as that sounds, when somebody goes on the run, they don't have anything to eat, no food, no phone. Uh, you know, no place to sleep. Who knows what could have happened to him, what state he was in. He could have did something stupid. So at the end of the day, I'm, I'm just glad he didn't do anything that would be tragic. And he did the right thing and turned himself in. So whew, let's see what happens next.